from Los Angeles. It's Alone with Rome. Welcome back. My guest is a fullback for the defending NFC champion Chicago Bears. He won a Super Bowl title with the Baltimore Ravens. I am joined right now by Oba Femi. I am Badejo. Femi, nice to have you on the program. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me here. Okay, you are currently serving a four-game suspension for violating the NFL's drug policy. Exactly what happened? Well, basically, um, you know, the, the NFL drug policy covers a lot of things. It's, it's headlined by the title steroids. In my case, I had an anti-estrogen-related substance in an over-the-counter supplement that I took. And, you know, something being banned in your urine, it's automatic four-game suspension. That's basically how I got to this point. All right, so does your punishment fit your crime? I don't think so. You know, I think that, um, you know, I, not, not, not intending to throw anybody under the bus, but, you know, you have guys that are um, using hardcore steroids, using HGH, things like that, um, admitting to using, using it longer than um, even a season. And in my case, you can time based on my clean tests, which were November, December, uh, February, March, April. I had a failed test in January only. And just based on those t on that time frame, you can see that I, I had to use a supplement for about a three or four week period. And my punishment is the same as theirs, which is a four game suspension. You know, I think in my case, it was more conduct detrimental um, than it was uh, a drug situation. In your case, did you make a mistake or were you looking to get an edge? And did you know what you were doing? I was in no way was I looking to get an edge. You know, um, in, in my case, I was supplement. I was using a supplement that I that I had not researched enough. Something that I ingested that I probably should have um, done a better job of researching. But um, I was doing what I always do. I've been supplementing for 16 years. I didn't do anything out of the ordinary except I use a different product other than a product that I normally would use. So um, did I try to cheat? No. Was I intending to get an advantage? Absolutely not. All right. You look at that sound bite that I had with Roger Goodell. He would make it sound like intent does not matter. My question then, does intent matter or is cheating cheating? Um, you know, in our, in our society, we base everything we do on intent. You know, I think levels of punishment are consistent with a person's intent. Um, you know, I think that you have to give the NFL judiciary the ability to use their subjective opinion. They're intelligent guys. You know, we're, we're, it's a $7 billion business. Are you going to tell me that when it comes to uh, off the field issues and, and uh, a player's behavior that you can use uh, intent and a, a player's background and a player's history with uh, problems with the law? But when it comes to how a player uses a drug or his intent to use a drug, we don't use their intent in this case. It doesn't make any sense to me. All right, so for instance, if you're not looking to get an edge, why use supplements at all? Well, I mean, I think, I think supplement, supplementation is something that's been going on for years. You know, I definitely believe it helps with recovery. I definitely believe there's some things that um, can help prolong your career. But, you know, I don't make the rules as to what a banned substance is and what a legal substance is. But I'm going to take everything I can that's legal within the rules and use it to my advantage. I think it's my right as a player to prolong a, a career, a career that's short to begin with. I'm going to say, now you're in a bad spot right now, and you know that. As a professional athlete, how do you not know exactly what's going into your body? Um, I think that in my case, I think that um, I was a little bit naive because I've become so comfortable with reading labels and doing things on my own. I was an undrafted uh, rookie free agent. Everything I've done has pretty much been on my own. I've, I've chosen my trainers. I've found nutritionists. I've, I've, gone, I've gone off the reservation a lot, and it's worked for me. I think I got a little overconfident in my ability to assess things. I'm not a chemist. Um, I think that I was, I made the mistake of not doing my due diligence of study, but was I trying to cheat? Um, was it, was it um, something that I was trying to do that was illegal? Definitely not. What percentage of the league would you say are there, or how many guys are looking to cheat, are looking to get an edge, do know exactly what they're doing and hope they don't get caught? You know what? I can tell you honestly, in my 11 years, I can't say that I know more than three or four guys that have intended to cheat. Three or four. I, mean, I played on, this is my fifth team. And guys trust me. Guys talk to me. I was a player rep in Arizona. Um, you know, I was, in, I was in Minnesota for a number of years. I was in Baltimore for a number of years. And I can't think of more than three or four guys that have actually outright cheated. Okay, but that's not to be confused with guys that are looking to do it, right? Those are the guys that you know of. Those are the guys do that I know Do you think of. it's an issue in the league? Is it a I don't problem? Think it, I don't think it is because I think that the NFL drug testing and just with the advancement of technology and, and the things that, that, that they can do in a lab, you know, I think that obviously uh, human growth hormone is, is the one thing that's been very hard to find and very hard to detect. But beyond that, you know, ephedrine's a banned substance now. They can, they can check you on that. Um, there's a number of substances on the NFL ban list. Sammy, if HGH to, is hard to find and mm -hmm. it's hard to detect and you know it works and guys get an edge, why wouldn't guys do it? I mean, for me, it's a principle. You know, I've done things the right way my whole career. You know, um, I don't think at this point it's something I need to do to gain an edge. Um, and I, I don't, I wouldn't feel right about taking that course. You know, I've done things the right way for, for so long. I, I don't even know what the mindset would be to go that route. What do you feel like this has done to your reputation, your integrity? 
how you're seen. That's the worst thing. I think the worst thing about it is, is that I feel like I embarrassed myself, you know, my family, um, obviously my teammates, but um, I never want anyone to think that I was, I was doing it the wrong way. And that's what I kind of feel like it's done. I feel like people that always question me, you know, I think I have the physique and the build that you would think, like that guy might be on something. Look at his brother, he might be on something too. I think that we fit that profile, but the reality of it is people that know us know that we would never do that. And I think that it's, it's put me into question a little bit. And it's not about the money, you know, I'm, I'm gonna lose a quarter of my salary, but it's really not about that. Of course, Sam, anytime somebody says it's not about the money, you know what it's about, right? Well, the money. It's really not about the money. If, if, you, if, if they were to tell me, hey, you know what? You failed a drug test and we believe your story. How about this? You go play four games for free. We won't mention that your failed test. I'd say in a minute, yes, I'll do that. I'll play four games for free. You don't mention that I failed a test, and let's move forward. Speaking of the teams, you're a player rep with Arizona, mm -hmm. and they released you pretty quickly upon the news. Right. But no sooner than you were released, Chicago picked you up even before you were done serving the suspension. Right. What do you make of the way Arizona handled it as opposed to Chicago? Well, I mean, it tells you a lot about the Arizona organization. You know, you, you look at the things Arizona does and the, and, the, and, the, and the way they handle things, and you wonder why they don't win. I love the guys in Arizona. The guys in Arizona are incredible. I, I love them like brothers. But as far as the organization goes, as far as running things, I feel like I'm a player that did well in that, for that team. I, I feel like I'm a player that, that helped the young guys out, that did things the right way. And to tell me you're going to stand by me in one breath, and then the minute the owner finds out, you know, you release me. That, that just kind of sums up, you know, how Arizona's viewed around the league, I think. You feel like they owed you something. I don't think they owed me anything, but tell me the truth, one. And uh, if you tell me you're going to stand by me, then stand by me. You know, don't tell me that you, that you will and then don't. Just say you might. Say, we'll see what happens. Maybe we won't stand by you. But I, can, I can handle the truth, you know. Have you spoken to Roger Goodell about your situation? No, I have not. You know, I, I didn't really have an opportunity to. I don't know if, if the avenues that we went through for this appeal would have actually ever made it to him. I would have loved to, though, if I would have had, the, you know, the opportunity. I think I, think I, I think I could have shined some light on just the way things are handled. You know, I think there's some things that need to be tweaked, I think. Yeah, Femi, you make a pretty good argument for yourself. But if somebody's watching right now and says, you know what, I don't buy it. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was getting into. It just doesn't wash with me. What do you well, think? Put it this way. The, the Chicago Bears did their due diligence in studying my background and studying who I am and where I come from. And they thought that I was a good enough player and an honest enough guy to give me an opportunity to come to camp to let me sit out my suspension and bring me back. You know, that's, that's, that's where we're at right now. So I think that if a team that, that is as successful as they do will trust me, I don't see why the, the public shouldn't believe my story. You know, I think I've done things the right way. All right, so finally, if four games is too much, what do you think you should have gotten? I think I should have got one game, two at the most. Like I said, conduct detrimental is more of an appropriate tag for my offense than uh, Obafemi Ayan Badejo fails steroid uh, uh, policy. You know what I mean? I, ju I just think that it's, it's, it's a little harsh, and the bottom line is I didn't take a steroid. You know, that's, and that's, that's what really upsets me the most. All right, good to spend time with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks Appreciate for the opportunity. It.